let's talk about the financial institutions across the globe, which is witnessing a challenging times due to pandemic ads. It has induced uncertainties. Well, however, this is a time when FIs are exploring new things and opening up new vistas in terms of management, operation, technology, and overall strategies. Let's discuss on how the decisions makers are making the optimum utilization of the opportunities coming their way. Well, joining in the panel is Dr. Ravi Gupta, Editor-in-Chief, the Banking and Finance Post and Founder and CEO, Elets Technomedia. Joining him is Mr. Sachin Datta, Chief Operating Officer, Canada HSBC Life Insurance, Priya Deshmukh Gilbile, Chief Operating Officer, Manipal Signa Health Insurance. Joining them is Shankar Jadav, Managing Director, BSE Investments, Dr. Saurav Datta, Executive Director, IT, IDBI Bank, Anil Binapala, Founder and CEO of VVFI India Finance. Can we have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, for our dignitaries and panelists. Thank you. Welcome you all uh, for this exciting uh, panel. And it's an honor uh, to be here as a moderator uh, with an esteemed uh, uh, speaker uh, list here. Uh, like all of these people are the, some of the important leaders of the BFSI industry, of the, uh, representing various aspects of it. So uh, the keeping this in the context of the overall uh, our past two and a half years of turmoil of uh, COVID, and there's a whole uh, uh, so-called World War uh, III going on in Ukraine. And uh, there's a uh, lot of like disruptions, digital disruptions happening in Delhi. The whole uh, global uh, climate of uh, uh, certainty, uh, certainty is uh, missing. And uh, each organization, uh, either it's a government or a, uh, a private sector or any other sector of the economy, has to be highly, highly agile uh, to stay relevant in these uh, turbulent uh, times when there is a, a global recession happening. and. Uh, India is like uh, uh, going to be the uh, perhaps the biggest uh, or the fastest uh, growing economy of the world. So these are very uh, what you call uh, uh, interesting scenarios happening globally. Uh, we are all like reading the news, and uh, in these changing times, how are the uh, BFSI institutions going to? Uh, evolve themselves, uh, remain agile, remain relevant, and f focus on the customer and still focus on their growth. So that is the overall background of uh, these discussions. So I will uh, start with uh, Mr. Sachin Datta, who is the Chief Operating Officer of uh, Canada HSBC Life Insurance. That how are you uh, seeing the overall uh, disruptions in the economy and uh, position of India? And in these uh, situations, role of digital. So uh, I will still uh, keep on the f f focus as a digital as a context and having the global uh, 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 changes uh, as a uh, another uh, pointer uh, for our discussions. Yeah, over to you, Sachin. Sure. Uh, uh, thanks for that question. I think uh, your question has got multiple parts to it. So, uh, and uh, the question is very deep also just to understand. I feel that from an uncertainty uh, perspective, there's a lot of opportunity that is also cropping up. While there's an uncertainty in certain pockets, in certain sectors, but then of course every uncertainty leads to an opportunity. And I think uh, the way to tap that opportunity is to stay basic at times. Uh, I think you mentioned about customers. Uh, I think at any uh, any such time frame, where, wherever there is an opportunity, the key to that opportunity lies with what the customer needs. Uh, so any business model that you're in, if you have a customer coming to the center of uh, the strategy, then everything kind of uh, revolves around. Now, of course, today, looking at various different sectors, you know, be it insurance or otherwise, what is the need that the customer is having? So, uh, you know, coming from the backdrop of pandemic, and pandemic still, uh, you know, in some form and shapes, uh, you know, continues to be there. 
there is an increased need that we see, uh, you know, from an insurance perspective, both on the life insurance side, and one of my co-panelists can also talk about how health insurance has kind of uh, become, uh, health and wellness has kind of become really the talk on the down. So while pandemic gave us a lot of uncertainty, it gave a lot of opportunity for the insurance sector to kind of come forward and provide that comfort to the customer that the customer needs and uh, during these times. Now, of course, sitting at homes and not being able to access uh, some of these facilities physically was always a challenging and a disruptive uh, uh, thing that COVID uh, shown. And that is where I think technology helped. So, you know, customer, I believe, got connected to the businesses much more better than what customer was doing in the past with the help of technology. And of course, uh, you know, how we could bring more agility into the setup and all of that, that can be discussed. But uh, a very uh, a crisp answer to what, uh, you know, the point that you made, there's a lot of opportunity today that exists in the sector. India as an economy, I think we're growing um, fairly well and fairly good. And uh, there are reports of, uh, you know, next 10 years being that of India. So clearly we are and we will continue to be the land of opportunities. And uh, the key to unlock those opportunities are, are two. One, customer. And of course, a second technology. So that would be, uh, you know, Dr. Gupta, my view on uh, on your point. Excellent uh, 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 inputs. Uh, I think we mentioned about the customer technology and also the uh, uh, India's uh, growth, uh, which is uh, happening at a very very fast pace. Let me uh, uh, request Mr. Shankar Jadav, who is the managing director of BSC Investments, to speak. And uh, what are the uh, pointers I have already reached and like, like your comments on it, Shankar? Actually, like uh, he mentioned, I think it's not a time of uncertainty. It's actually a time of opportunity. The whole world today looks at India. Uh, the main issue is many people have not realized that technology makes communication very fast. So earlier, what you would get to know 10 days later, today you get to know it in the same instant. So people are confused and they think it's uncertain times. But let's look at indices. For instance, the Sensex has moved between 2,000 points, 2,500 points over the last two, three months or six months. It's actually more certain than what we had earlier. It's just that people don't like to see the downside. If you ask uh, people who are in the markets, the financial institutions, they feel today it's much more certain world we have a steady union government at the center for last decade. Looking forward, we see that we will have a steady government. There are enough number of mouths. If you look at 65% of our population being younger, those are the people who want to actually spend. So India is moving from a savings economy to a consumer economy and the whole world likes it. That's how demand is created. In fact, most of the world, the developed world, has faced a demand problem because they don't have people to survive. The problems that we have and which you should address is the income disparity. We have still 80 crore people who we require to give free rations. I think there's a big opportunity there. The government alone cannot do it. We as insurance companies, finance people have to support them. These are the people who want to work. Every year we add almost one population of Australia into the employment pool. And at the same time, we have lots of startups. We have lots of new things. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, there's also one more thing that we have to look at. As we mature, the compliance norms become very difficult. So today we are all sitting, we know how difficult the compliance is, both from the technology side and as well as the consumer side. But that compliance is important because otherwise the customers will not feel secure. That is my take on today's economy. It's an opportunity and we should grab it as much as possible. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I think uh, uh, the whole uh, idea of opportunity is a uh, very, very important and how uh, the uh, we all as a financial institution, stakeholders are able to use this opportunity and uh, contributing growth of the country is an important uh, point uh, raised by Shankar Jadavji. Uh, let me uh, request uh, Anil, uh, uh, who is a... Uh, uh, co-founder and CEO of BB5 India Finance. Uh, your take on uh, this uh, topic. Yeah, I think as uh, both Sachin and uh, Shankarji have uh, mentioned, obviously there is an opportunity, but uh, we do have to recognize that we there is a bit of uncertainty. And the uncertainty is coming from the developed market. And if you look at the uh, European markets, which have been in kind of a recessionary state ever since Brexit, the pandemic didn't help. And if you're looking at uh, the US market where inflation is at a record high, 
um, and that's kind of affecting the Indian market, um, rightfully so, because we are all a global economy and we kind of asked for it for the last 20 years um, and we are very intertwined. Uh, while all of this remains true, what uh, the points that Sachin and Shankar were, made, um, uh, were saying was, India is still the land of opportunity now. It is the land of opportunity. Our, the next decade is the decade of India. And uh, even though we might in the short run have some headwinds mainly coming from currency depreciation which, because of the interest rate uh, increases in the US and the uh, crude oil related prices, we being such a huge importer of crude oil, uh, the negative effects of those two are the two slight concerns that we have as an economy. But overall, if you're looking at uh, uh, the opportunity for growth in India, we are the only large economy that is expected to grow and grow at a rate of 6 to 7% this next year. But over the next 8 to 10 years, we, are we will continue to grow at a higher rate than that, um, reaching the goal of what our Prime Minister continues to say of a $5 trillion economy becoming the third largest economy, not just in PPP terms, but in actual terms. Uh, those are all will be on the strength of uh, large companies like here. Um, everybody else on this panel is uh, from a large company. I represent the young startup yes. economy of India. Uh, we are a fintech and BFC. And a uh, very relevant point made by Shankarji saying that we are moving from being a savings economy to a consumer economy, consuming economy. And consumption is driven by credit. And that's where we are uh, playing in. And if you look at post-Vietnam US, the growth, the rapid growth of that has happened with expansion of credit facilities in terms of credit card, like revolving lines of credit that have enabled consumers to uh, expand the disposable income of consumers. And that's where we think India is headed and we need solutions which are fast, agile, financially to feed the insane, uh, I mean, a lot of hunger uh, the Indian middle class has and bring a lot more people into the Indian middle class. Uh, there are about 80 million people who are below the poverty line, but there are like 400, 500 million people who are driving this economy. And as this economy keeps growing, there are more and more people who will move into the middle class. So it's a huge opportunity area, but we should not lose sight of these short-term concerns. And uh, we need to factor it into uh, our, uh, our overall growth plans because we need to survive the next couple of years yes. uh, to thrive after that. Um, and uh, specifically from our side, we see credit um, and access to credit as a big driver to reach that goal. I think uh, uh, Anil has highlighted the role of uh, startups and a lot of uh, NBFC and fintech startups are like actually disrupting the whole uh, BFSI sector and specifically the credit market and uh, which is a uh, good news uh, for the economy uh, because they are serving some of the, uh, those sectors uh, where uh, there is a need but uh, there is uh, not enough supply or there are uh, there are uh, uh, a lot of uh, compliance and other regulatory uh, issues uh, so that the smaller uh, borrowers are, uh, are not being uh, served enough. So uh, thanks, uh, Anil, for highlighting uh, th this point. And uh, before I uh, reach out to Dr. Uh, Saurav Datta, uh, let me uh, request uh, Priya Deshmukh, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Manipal Signa Health Insurance, that how do you see the... Um, insurance penetration evolving in last uh, three years, specifically in the uh, uh, post of COVID uh, situations and how it is uh, impacting the overall, I think, uh, insurance industry and the overall uh, BFSI industry as a whole. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Ravi and Elitz for the opportunity and great conversation. What a topic, uh, you know, uh, India as a country is at the helm of uh, opportunities and kind of weaning off uh, the uncertainties. I would say it's a combination, um, as uh, my fellow panelists uh, mentioned. And uh, we, we are, uh, we are uh, you know, kind of a growing economy and uh, probably fastest growing. And, uh, you know, but the, the per capita income is going up, consumer awareness is going up. Uh, digital and digitization and automation is really bringing in uh, information at a lightning speed. 
connecting the whole uh, world, uh, you know, so to say. Um, so absolutely a right, uh, you know, place at the right time. But uh, also watch out areas in terms of, uh, you know, concerns on frauds going up and, you know, so much of uh, awareness uh, going up and other uh, cyber security threats and multiple other challenges that we, we would uh, face. And those are, uh, you know, opportunities as well as uh, areas to watch out. Uh, diving into uh, insurance, um, um, you know, at the back of uh, pandemic, if I may say coming out of the pandemic or post pandemic, because uh, there is still uncertainty, health remains to a matter of concern, as well as an opportunity for uh, the world. Uh, specifically for India, if we were to look at how we combated COVID, um, uh, there are, there are uh, some great stories, the way uh, healthcare sector braved the whole challenge. And even the corporates, uh, for that matter, the way we've kind of dealt with insurance industry also came together. We paid the uh, highest possible COVID claims from a health insurance perspective, which was never priced for. Penetration has been increasing uh, at the back of increasing uh, cost of treatment, uh, awareness, um, and uh, a lot of innovation up happening in uh, healthcare. And the mantra of, uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, Modiji's mantra around digitization and really taking the country forward. All of this put together, uh, along with awareness from the consumer on uh, conducting health checkups, trying and taking charge of their health. Because people have realized that uh, being healthy and uh, taking charge of your health is never now going to be an, um, you know, kind of an option to really look after once you've dealt with your, um, you know, kind of other needs uh, of life. It has become very, very pivotal and center for us to remain healthy. And with that, um, you know, insurance penetration has gone up. A uh, lot of, um, uh, you know, the scheme around um, uh, the government, um, you know, kind of insurance has kind of taken penetration further ahead. Um, we see this as a big opportunity area. Still, we talk about uh, penetration. It is uh, abysmally small compared to other uh, parts of the world. And uh, the healthcare spend is happening. Somebody is, uh, you know, kind of funding it. It's a consumer who is funding it. So it's time for us uh, as health insurance and, uh, you know, the, the uh, financial, um, you know, organizations as we're speaking about credit and all the other areas which are, you know, kind of uh, pivoting forward for us to really take charge and make sure that we have uh, the complete country covered uh, in some sort of uh, insurance. And I heard Sachin speak about uh, wellness. Now, at the back of COVID, at, at the back of other, uh, you know, if you were to talk about the country, so much of progression, we are now uh, becoming a large, uh, uh, you know, kind of a economy and, uh, you know, leading uh, the course. But at the same time, we continue to have challenges around infectious disease, lifestyle, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-communicable uh, NCD kind of diseases, and at the same time, other challenges that we continue to face. So how do we really balance uh, the whole uh, scene around uh, healthcare spends and uh, get uh, insurance, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, is an important, um, you know, task that is in front of us and uh, poses a very big opportunity. Uh, all of this will be supported with a lot of uh, digitization and automation uh, with, with consumers knowing what they want and consumers at the center. So, yes, um, you know, as uh, fellow, fellow panelists mentioned, a uh, lot of awareness and consumer activism and knowledge. Uh, supported by, um, you know, um, uh, all the, not only health insurance, all the industries realizing that you may continue to develop products inside out, that that's not going to work. It's going to be outside in from what is a consumer need and that is what uh, is going to drive growth and, uh, you know, progress uh, in uh, segments, BFSI as well as health insurance and for the country at large. Thank you. Fantastic. I think, uh, Priya, uh, uh, you have uh, highlighted uh, a very important aspect of uh, health insurance uh, has increased uh, post the pandemic, but still the penetration is very, very low uh, compared to uh, many of the other countries. And that actually shows the uh, kind of a disparity in um, growth uh, we have. Like there is a huge urban rural divide or a rich and uh, poor divide or uh, inequality in our earnings in the overall uh, economic scenario of India. And that's where the role of financial institutions is important to uh, improve the rural credit, uh, rural access to the banking, uh, and, uh, 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 and the importance of digital increases in this whole uh, background. Uh, let me uh, reach out to uh, Dr. Saurav Datta, uh, Executive Director of IT, uh, IDBI Bank. Uh, 
Uh, some of the speakers have already mentioned about increasing uh, compliance requirements uh, from consumers, from lenders, uh, from all the stakeholders. And uh, we have like seen uh, some of uh, this uh, being discussed in the last uh, one week also uh, globally. And uh, the role of IT department in any uh, bank has like dramatically evolved in the last uh, three, four years. So how are you uh, seeing as uh, a leader of the IT in uh, the IDBI bank, the evolving role of IT, and how it is impacting the uh, vision of a organization, vision of a uh, bank, and how are you seeing the future, if you can elaborate upon it. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Uh, very happy to be here, and uh, thank you for the opportunity, Dr. Gupta and Ilets. Uh, I'll start, yeah, so the role of IT is definitely part of the entire BFSI uh, sector. If you look, the IT is the kind of driving the whole thing. Digital is the next, uh, uh, I mean, digital, we cannot live without digital now, so it's all there. So a uh, couple of things I want to mention is that during the uh, pandemic that we have, we saw, uh, there were this, uh, the concept of, the people were quite uncertain that what's going to happen, what's going to happen to the job. Suddenly, overnight, the offices were closed, right? And uh, uh, people were coming into the work from home 100% mode. Uh, that was part of a challenge, and it was tackled very nicely. Uh, and uh, we saw that from there on, we have some new concepts which are already there in the market, such as moonlighting, right? So that was something new which was uh, come to India as well. So we saw people working for multiple organizations, same person working for different organizations. So that was one of the, I'll, I'll go into specifics, right? So, so we saw that from a skill perspective, uh, that there was a dearth of skill. And the skill set which was there in the industry, for the IT people especially, they found a big opportunity in this uh, uh, kind of uncertainty. Suddenly the rate, the, the, uh, the salaries of people who were like say four year or five year old uh, Java resources, they were, they were charging say X amount of rupees, but suddenly that, that ask went up to 10X, right? So we saw that. Now we're also seeing that now there's a glut of uh, the, the, the layoffs and all of that. So suddenly all of them are getting rationalized to the earlier or even below level below than that because people are not getting jobs. So you can think that way that it is kind of a uh, revenge uh, uh, layoffs. You can talk about that because they were trying to uh, get on your throats to get the higher salaries and all of that. But, but uh, going forward, we see that this is going to be rationalized. We see that trend coming down. From a skill set perspective, we have to be uh, on all areas. And from a banking side, uh, like so business without compliance uh, is, is no business, right? So at least from banking perspective, other business also, if you look at the, the healthcare, right? So you saw that what happened to Pfizer. So, so, so uh, they, they, did, they did their own vaccines, but the vaccines were not at the right levels, right? So compliance, governance is one of the main uh, core pillars for any business, not only BFSI, but any business. Look at what happened to uh, the, the uh, immediately after Chat GPT, Bard came out. It was completely in a UAT mode. They, they th threw it out in the market, and it was a complete failure. So, so you see that this is going to be uh, something that the, the industry has to take care of. From a banking perspective, again, there are many new things which are, I mean, new things in terms of that. The opportunities, uh, for example, cloud, right? So cloud has been there for some time. It came out of the hype curve way back in. 2009 onwards, and people have been adopting cloud. In fact, I've also done a number of transformations on cloud. But from a banking perspective, we have to be very careful as to what goes onto the cloud. Right? In cloud, I'm speaking as a public cloud, right? So uh, public cloud, there are things like the big techs are already there. But again, the, the control of the, uh, the cloud infrastructure is with them, right? The keys are with them. So we need to have something. Uh, people are thinking of private within public. Uh, where the keys lies with the with the um, uh, the user, so those things we will see that how they are evolving. But again, we need to be careful as to any new thing. We should not jump on that. Everybody is talking about AI, ML, and then uh, the the automation uh, which is there using AI, ML. So those things also we need to take with uh, with uh, careful steps, right? Everything is not AI. So you have to you have to think carefully what what needs to be done in those areas. What can be automated? Does it make a business sense? So those things have to be carefully evaluated and then uh, we need to move forward. At the same time, keeping our workforce uh, completely engaged, completely motivated, that is something which is of prime importance in any uh, industry which is having IT as an enabler. So uh, that, that being the key, key factor, 
Uh, from a banking perspective, of course, the domain knowledge, the specific things from an IT perspective which is required is of course there. But security is across domains, right? So you have security which is spanning across domains. We have awareness coming up, but uh, again, uh, yeah, you, it, it takes, I mean, just one, one uh, event to bring everything crashing down, one breach which brings everything down, right? So you see that we recently had a couple of breaches in, uh, in healthcare, in AIMS, right? You had breaches in CDSL. Uh, then other breaches we don't even know of. There are state actors who do not do it for money, right? So you have one aspect is money. The other aspect is completely different, right? So there are many different aspects of uh, the, the uh, attacks which, which happens in the industry. So we need to be careful of that and going forward, keep our head level. We should not be jumping on like, like which has happened, we saw that the, uh, the, because of the COVID, there was a dearth of the skill set. There was kind of a um, synthetic dearth of uh, skill set which was there. Uh, but, but now that is getting up, filled up, and, and we'll see that this trend uh, is going to go down. And the industry is getting supported with the uh, right level of skill set and the technology that goes behind it. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic, uh, Sarovji, and uh, you have uh, talked about uh, you, uh, 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 just talked about uh, Google and uh, Chat GPT, and the cost of not doing it at a right was hundred billion dollars. Two days. So, so I think uh, someone said that uh, uh, the, the, info, uh, uh, the information. Uh, uh, finding an information which uh, used to take 10 days and now it takes a click of a button. So going up of a uh, 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 share price like takes a click of a button and going down takes a click of a button. So the speed of change is dramatic and dramatic. And so and that's how uh, someone said that it's a it's a uh, not a crisis, but someone said it's an opportunity. So. <laughs> someone's crisis is some other, someone else's opportunity. So uh, let me uh, request our uh, panelists to uh, uh, give their uh, closing remarks that uh, in these uh, highly dynamic uh, times, and, and uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Sarodatta. Uh, um, also highlighted uh, aspects of AI, and AI is the talk of the town. So, uh, uh, and he also like talked about employment. So there are uh, like, uh, uh, there is a uh, news website which announced that it is uh, laying off a lot of employees and saying that all these tasks will be done by uh, uh, chat GPT. So uh, like, and uh, uh, and uh, no one had heard about it uh, two months back. So in these highly uh, dynamic times and uh, highly uh, dynamic economic uh, factors uh, globally and locally happening, how are we this, uh, seeing role of India and role of a digital and how do, do uh, we as a country uh, use these times as an opportunity? Uh, so. Let me uh, 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 request our panelists to uh, give your uh, closing remarks on it and requesting Sachin to uh, take it off. So I think uh, India actually provides a good platform for everyone to experiment. Now when I say experiment in a positive way because we've got a large scale, we've got uh, you know uh, a lot of people to cover from the insurance perspective or health. So I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity that India as a country provides to the world today. Uh, and I think IT is, as I said, is a key enabler, you know, so I tell and that's an analogy that I give that if COVID would have happened in 1980s, would the businesses have survived the businesses that survive today? Would, would we have been able to survive uh, a COVID wave in 1980s? To me, the answer comes as no. And the only immunity that the businesses had today, which was not there in 1980s, is technology. So I see technology today as a very important vaccine for the businesses to keep running. And what we call as digital is going to be the only way that we kind of do business. So when we look at customers today in India, and of course to the scale uh, point that I was making, uh, is that there's a lot of scale, there's a lot of uh, experimentation that, that you can do. India being a diverse country, you know, a customer sitting in rural India to a metro to an urban city, you know, clearly the demands and the needs, the environments are completely different. So you can experiment a lot with your products, with your services, looking at what that particular customer 
customer as a segment needs and of course to enable that diversity or to empower that diversity you need technology very different kind of platforms of course uh, you know cloud provides you one solution the organization can decide many but what's going to be really really pivotal is that we do not think of today's customers of course you know there's a lot of millennials you know our kids you know growing up uh, there'll be a completely dif different environment for uh, for for our kids when they come of our age and of course you know some of the things will become more relevant then which we think are more important today maybe irrelevant at that point in time so what is very important is as an organization or as businesses what are our key value differentiators what are what what is driving our strategy is our strategy short term you know fine we need to have short term strategies how long term are we thinking how futuristic are we are we building a resilient organization that can withstand another wave of covid or a different wave of covid altogether i think those are some of the important uh, questions that one need to ask and there's a lot that is available in the market today in terms of you know various solutions where various partners and you know often it becomes really crowded but i think whenever a decision to invest in technology is taken it has to be with the clear focus and vision of not today but you know in long term what does the customer look like in long term what does the business look like in long term and how diverse the business could be because what we've seen during covid is that if you have a dependency on a particular channel if that channel was not to work then what will happen so you know contingency measures are extremely important therefore i expect and i foresee a lot of innovation uh, happening in the space of products as well as how we reach out to the customer how we connect with the customer how we empower the customer and last point for me uh, is that technology is also now no more a back end function you know so we used to call technology as support function we used to call technology as a back end function i feel that technology today uh, with the help of digital is playing a front end role where a device in the hand of the customer is a technical device right at the end of the day this is technology which is powering uh, the customer's decision now if we enable and empower the customer to do the transactions that they're doing then and there itself example being upi example being so many other things uh, that are today available via apps and reducing the load and the back end will ensure that the customers are able to get these services and do things on their own what that does is it makes customers become more aware now if as an economy or as a nation if we become more aware about insurance or other products and services i think we've kind of bridged a lot of gap uh, so th th those are my closing uh, comments uh, dr gupta are very important we are at a very important uh, uh, you know point in time where we have uh, responsibility for the generation that is waiting and eagerly awaiting to experiment more so we should provide that platform as a country and of course be proud of uh, you know we being the seventh largest country in the world to kind of do a lot of stuff innovate a lot of stuff if at all we fail we fail fast and we know what what probably would not work rather than you know what only that will work so to your example of chat gpt or bard for that matter you know today people are kind of experimenting and do not have uh, you know uh, the risk of failure of course you know billions of dollars getting wasted is one but organization might have provided for it you could argue but they want to kind of experiment they want to embrace technology they want to fail fast and they want to kind of learn and build their experience and build an ecosystem so if at the end of the day if you made an ecosystem built an ecosystem it's a job well done so that those are my closing uh, points fantastic inputs fantastic i think uh, let me request anil to uh, give your inputs who is the co-founder and ceo of vbfi india finance yeah yeah i think uh, in terms of uh, india what has happened in the last decade is that we have laid the foundation aadhar jandan mobile is the foundational infrastructure that will provide a great opportunity for india to grow at a very rapid rate um i'll take a slightly contrarian view to what sachin said in terms of technology is the the driver it it's so pervasive that it's not a differentiator anymore everybody has access to the same technology everybody has uh, i mean digital is the only way he's rightfully said it uh, and what our government and our regulatory infrastructure over the last 10 years have done is provided us with the most sophisticated government driven technology stack in the world there is nothing like aadhar there is nothing like upi i mean you can keep enumerating what all our government and our regulators have done in this last 8 uh, to 10 years that that such infrastructure is not available anywhere else in the world and what it has given is given an opportunity for 
startups, fintechs to leverage the technology and start challenging incumbents. So much so that the incumbents, the large financial institutions, banks and insurance companies are, I mean, they're also thinking digital and are trying to do and use the same uh, uh, foundational infrastructure that our government and our regulatory organizations have provided. So in terms of growth and the opportunity that we have, the, we all have to use this foundational infrastructure to take that quantum leap. And uh, uh, another point uh, that has already been referred to is in terms of the opportunity that diverse set of consumers that uh, we have in India. The rural India is still outside the access in terms of quite a few financial services. And uh, the middle India is where everybody is focused in. At least one step has happened is from prime India in financial services, which is only 55 million people with a credit card, the story has moved to the next 150, 200 million people in terms of uh, the middle India that needs access to financial services. Now this uh, challenge for all of us is to solve for the next 400 million people, the next 500 million people. And uh, I think there are many solutions that all of us have, uh, but innovation is the key and consumer is the main focus. As long as we keep those and keep using the foundational infrastructure we have, the opportunities are unlimited. And uh, I think uh, uh, all of us can innovate and make ensure the vision that this is the next decade of India is a, is, is a reality. Fantastic, Tanil. Uh, let me uh, request Shankar uh, Jado, who is the managing director of BSC Investments, to give his uh, closing remarks and also keep this in a context that uh, number of people who are investing in the stock uh, uh, market as a uh, common man is investing, its number of is dramatically increasing day by day. So, how is this? Uh, it has its own positives or any negatives. So what are they And uh, uh, in this whole uh, context of growth and opportunity? Fortunately for us, we had a regulator which was very, had a good vision and we started very young. So 25 years now almost when SEVI came up and we've grown over the time and that's why you see the number of investors really grown. Let me talk about say insurance for instance or say medical uh, insurance as well as term insurance. Lots of us are working and employed and we have group insurance schemes. But I see insurance companies don't want to tap the same people once they leave a particular job. Why can't they extend the same insurance to the same person for say three more years with an extra premium price? They just drop him off. I think that's a lost customer. There are many such things. For instance, I told you about employment. Today, we have in India a big problem of people who are in the middle class. The poor, the government takes care of. The rich or upper middle class, we take care of ourselves maybe. But the middle class people have a little difficult problem. Like for instance, in Bombay, we are looking at, say, police uh, getting inside. There are 18,000 vacancies and 18 lakh people have it. Out of which, some 6 lakhs, are graduates when the minimum qualification required is only 12 standard. Some 60,000 are postgraduate. One of the reasons is human beings don't like uncertainty. If you tell me I'll get 10 times my salary, but I don't know when I'll be fired, or I'll get only whatever I get, but I will not be fired unless I do a big problem of say integrity or something big rule, I think people would choose the latter. That's world over. We are not giving our children that chance. Our children are growing up in an environment, though he mentioned up them about well, they are growing up in an uncertain environment. They feel that even the parents don't take care of them. I think that's mistaken. We have to do something for our children. We have to give them an assurance. Today, how many children or people, parents hug their children? If they don't, there's no love and affection. We'll only be talking about things. He talked about technology and customers. I'm writing a book on customers. The customers, especially in Asia, looking at India, they don't really like only technology. Even five star, people like that person who's serving them. They like a call center person and they want the same person to talk. Today we came to Elets, I'm sure he has a team. They have specific personal connects with us. Otherwise we would not be here despite our busy schedule. India requires human touch. There is no doubt about it. That's why most of us, even when we take insurance today, we don't do direct. Same way when we have stock exchanges, we have brokers whom we call today. So there is going to be employment, there is going to be a need, 
and we have a huge amount of labor we can train them there's a uh, think about the five, fifth standard students can't add two numbers or subtract two numbers i think that's a huge opportunity to the education sector we are all thinking only charging high and just skimming the market we have to go to the middle of the market which we are not doing i think that's the biggest opportunity with startups like anil and many other people are taking i see lots of msmes getting listed we got more than 400 listed they are tapping this opportunity i think there is hundreds of thousands of more msmes required to get up get in make money give services and not only virtual services there's another problem that we say in the financial market everyone wants to be in finance the financial uh, area subject sector cannot be larger than the real sector it is the circulation it's a blood blood cannot be more than the body itself we have to look for something physical which many people are trying to avoid i think we have to see what the western world has done how they have increased the per capita income how did they make lives better for the poorest and the middle class we are not looking at it and sorry to say though you are saying your per capita income is increasing countries like china have increased it four times more than what we have done since 78 and i think it reflects on us because we are in our 50s 40s and we have not done enough i think we have to stand now and i think finance sector is one which can really give a great boost as anil also mentioned and we should do something for it thank you fantastic uh, inputs uh, shankar ji and uh, let me request uh, priya uh, deshmukh who is the chief operating officer such manipal a, singma yeah such a buzzing conversation and <laughs> <laughs> amazing counter in views yeah. and amit's all this um, you know personally and uh, you know representing health insurance lots can be done Uh, and uh, sky is the limit how do you really uh, make it happen is a is a challenge with the kind of um, you know the infrastructure the way the uh, the ecosystem works uh, anyway that said uh, if we were to talk about technology and consumers um, uh, you know personally i believe technology was always there uh, it has evolved it has become faster agile more uh, predictive more um, you know kind of uh, uh, what do you say you could really expect the outcomes now and uh, deliver those outcomes but having said that from a consumer perspective each one of us is a consumer of some product now we want delivery in 20 minutes 30 minutes 16 minutes 14 minutes i don't know where the whole uh, <laughs> race is going to end but having said that that's the kind of expectation of all the products that we would uh, you know use as consumers so when it comes to insurance that's the kind of expectation now consumers uh, have uh, while um, you know uh, as a insurance industry we are experts in risk management we are experts in products correct i mean we could uh, 60 60 to 65% uh, of uh, healthcare spend is currently also out of pocket so there's a large population of india which is uncovered which is spending on healthcare now we were to uh, flip the conversation and talk about it earlier uh, we used to talk about creating new products now we talk about creating sachet products now we talk about episodic products and product innovation and um, you know that factory is keeping on uh, evolving and we'll have to evolve it as the consumer uh, awareness knowledge expectation evolves then we said uh, we will create solutions okay so uh, gone are the days only products are going to work we'll have to create solutions for the consumers because one size fit all is not the not the you know kind of mantra that is going to work anymore i would say now we are in a era backed by technology backed by you know so much of covid uh, you know kind of uh, overhang with people working from home and i would agree with sachin had it not been uh, you know technological support uh, which is a silent uh, uh, you know kind of uh, uh, enabler at the back end we wouldn't have operated from home imagine we got less than 24 hours to snap our product uh, you know entire business work completely um, you know in the back end and still continue to be there because as health insurance we couldn't say okay covid we are sitting home bound we can't service we had to keep our uh, you know uh, uh, pulse beating our call centers working and the entire back end moving from our office infrastructure literally taking those machines back in our cars back to home so technology is definitely something that is supported uh, you know our economy our uh, you know businesses uh, in india i'm limiting my comments here in india to continue to service uh, you know in in the most critical uh, business segments so when we talk about consumers i would say uh, consumers are expecting uh, you know experience 
and innovation in that experience and that experience cannot be equivalent to what Anil is experiencing for that matter. I need my experience to be personalized. I need it faster, agile and the speed and I want my, um, you know, whichever uh, uh, consumer uh, goods we are talking about or insurance for that matter, I expect the insurance company to even understand what I've not stated as my need. So those are, those are changes and uh, we'll have to uh, quickly, um, you know, kind of uh, change our gears. We have been changing but moving into the direction of customer experience and expectations which are evolving and not operate in the same era and the same way that we have been operating. Technology is definitely going to really uh, enable our, uh, you know, it is a startup, uh, you know, kind of a era and so much of innovation is happening. Uh, the fear of failure that used to be there, I have been an entrepreneur myself, uh, you know, couple of bunch of things that have failed. But the kind of platform today is there, the kind of, uh, you know, capital today is available for us to experiment, learn out of those experimenting and sprint again to really learn again and try and you know start again the opportunities are increasing of course uh, competition is increasing so keeping the consumer at the center understanding that you don't have to create everything in house it, it is a time that we share our each each other's uh, skill sets and not try and build it over and over again and spend that capital because capital in the country is finite and time is finite and with that innovation we have to take the reins and uh, you know kind of increase uh, penetration from insurance perspective as well as uh, innovation across the board for us to deliver change. And uh, the, the evolving environment is going to continue to there, be there. There will be war, there will be more pandemics, there will be, you know, uh, economic recession, a dollar rate, uh, you know, all those uh, currency fluctuations, all of that, that is going to continue to be there. In those environments, how do we innovate and keep the consumer at the center and make a change for the country to progress? I like the point he made. I mean, how, what, is, what is the kind of mantra that we are leaving behind for our children? What, are, what is the inspiration we are leaving behind for them is also an important uh, thought to really ponder as a closing remark. Thank you. Fantastic inputs, uh, Priya. And especially uh, 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 many of the speakers have talked about the bottom of the pyramid the uh, uh, he mentioned about middle class or the lower uh, uh, class or which is uh, not yet addressed enough by uh, any of our uh, institutions like there's a, a lot of opportunity there uh, uh, dr uh, sarvad uh, 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 you have the last word <laughs> yeah, thank you uh, i think we have uh, seen all the areas so i'll just touch upon the 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 IT story of the uh, businesses, basically. So Indian IT, if you look at that, they started uh, say mid uh, 70s uh, with uh, F.C. Kohli as the father of the uh, Indian startups of the of the uh, software industry, right? And then we started. So India was basically known as the uh, developer uh, community, and the, and the and the things happened uh, over a period of time, over decades. Of people went there. Uh, people who didn't know stuff, they studied uh, manuals and one while going on overseas flight. And then when they hit the ground, they started uh, uh, working on the systems. And, and those, those were exciting days, right? And now when we see now, what's happening is that the, uh, the software codes are readily available. People are not even thinking of programming, right? They're just looking, picking up code, chunks or snippets of code, plugging it in, and it's ready to work, right? Uh, and then you have the, the concept of uh, no code, right? So you have a low code, and then you have no code. So just drag and drop. And then things starts working on its own, right? So you want to develop some, uh, some some application or even app. It's very easy to do now, but people don't know what goes behind it. So like Jadaji was mentioning, that finance is not the only domain. So we have to look at other domains. So India missed big way in terms of the uh, chip industry, right? So the manufacturing of a chip, electronics chip, is one of the Achilles heels of India, right? So we missed a number of times. Three times we missed the bus. This time, at least we sh make sure that we have the fabs in India so that we are not dependent on any other country. So this, the independence, Atmirva Bharat, that should be the, the concept of all the businesses that we are doing here. Look at the, uh, the other side, the, the aerospace, right? So we recently had a big uh, uh, development, manufacturing and MRO for the helicopters, which was not there, right? A 600 acre facility in Karnataka, right? So about a week back. So uh, these things are happening and we are seeing also the fab is going to come in India, the you know, development of chips which we are so dependent uh, uh, for doing it abroad, right? So the chip crisis, which was there when we were struggling for chip, so we should be a manufacturing hub for that as well. So those are the things that we're gonna see coming up and uh, definitely people need to have their fundamentals very clear, right? So for example, that a software engineer who's developing something without knowing the background of the, 
of the whole uh, system, right? So that is that is something that really scares me. Uh, uh, and, and this low code thing coming up, people are so confident. There is something known as software reliability, uh, which people forget. So there's a whole course on software reliability, which, which is missed basically. So how your software can be reliable, how you can make sure that you have the same uh, kind of experience every time. So that is, uh, that is something which, which we need to think about. And definitely for uh, the next generation, uh, I mean, a lot of things which are missed, uh, if you look at what uh, one of the kings in, in Dubai had said, that his uh, grandfather used to ride a camel, his son rode a Rolls Royce, he was driving a Maybach, and his son was driving something else. But his son, or his next generation, will be again riding a camel. Right, so that is something that we have to be very careful about. We are providing for our children, we don't get any chance and, and we say, okay, you take this gadget, take that gadget and, and be happy, right, don't bother me. So those kind of things we have to see how we can uh, do better in those areas, right, and, and, and see that the fundamentals are clear uh, for our next generation. With that, I'd like to end, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for an exciting uh, panel, uh, highly interesting and uh, let's have a, uh, Big round of applause uh, for our panelists. Uh, it was uh, a lot of fun, a lot of learning, and uh, a lot of interesting uh, dimensions to the discussions that uh, came up. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it was such a very productive panel discussion. Let's have a huge round of applause for all the panelists. Well, I must say thank you so much for highlighting with such a knowledgeable aspects of FIs. And uh, moving ahead, I shall request Mr. Mrityunjay Mahapatra to please come on stage to felicitate a memento to all our panelists. Requesting uh, Dr. Ravi Gupta to please join them in felicitating a memento of honor from ourselves. Thank you so much for gracing this event with your esteemed presence. Thank you so much. Can we have a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? Once again, thanking our panelists and our dignitaries, uh, Sachin Datta, Priya Deshmukh Gilbile, Shankar Jadav, Dr. Saurabh Datta, and Anil Pinapale for gracing the event with their esteemed presence and sharing some insights on FSI. Thank you. <laughs>